bit of a, a rebirthing process almost. You're getting um, these these visions and these pictures in your head and you're trying to do them justice mm-hmm. on whatever medium it is you're choosing. And it's almost like you're, you're doing that so you can birth the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I... I this is quite a popular analogy, but you think of your artworks as your children. You know, you're you're, you're bringing them into being, mm-hmm. and uh, you, you have to bring them into being to make way for the next one. You know, that, mm-hmm. that's that's how it works. You know, mm-hmm. um, and as you become more experienced and more expert at what you're doing, you have fewer and fewer failures. Mm-hmm. So, you know, twenty years ago, I would I would destroy or throw away, you know, seven out of ten pictures, but, n- but now. You know, almost all of them are keepers. You mm-hmm. know? Um, but um, that that's um, that, that that success is, is it comes from the discipline of um, of preparing yourself properly, not not mm-hmm. not getting ahead of yourself, mm-hmm. um, and researching and uh, sketching and all of that. You know? mm-hmm. um, when it comes to your creative process and 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 allocating that space, where you are able to go there. Is there any particular process that you go through? Well, what you're really trying trying to achieve is a, a flow, a rhythm, mm-hmm. and if that rhythm is interrupted, as it regularly is with with you know all of the other um, uh, things, responsibilities I've got in my mm-hmm. life, um, then it's it's, it's not, the, the artistic process isn't really possible. So you mm-hmm. have, you need to allocate yourself a, a certain amount of time mm-hmm. to achieve that that rhythm. Um, and you need to be left alone, but uh, r- really, you, you have to spend a few days preparing your mind before you go into into the studio, mm-hmm. and then you establish your flow, and then you can't really get yourself away from the studio. Mm-hmm. But if that gets interrupted, you're you're in trouble, and it's you have to start again, mm-hmm. and get your your mind mm-hmm. uh, calibrated again for mm-hmm. for for delivering this vision that's sort of at the at the root of your your, your consciousness. Mm-hmm. I have this vision in my head of you starting a piece of work and like working through the night to get it done yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That oh yeah that happens all the time yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely it, it's odd because if you get into the famous zone then mm-hmm. seven hours will pass and, and you won't even notice mm-hmm. you know and and that that's true for it for anybody that's 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 thoroughly engaged in, in their activity whether mm-hmm. it's sport or mountain climbing or mm-hmm. or, or you know creativity mm-hmm. but uh, I I I, uh, not so much these days, but certainly when I was younger, I used to you know, stay up all night painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, um, how does it feel when you're in the zone and you've got the paintbrush in your hand? And it, It's quite weird, actually, because you're, you're, you're not... You're, your consciousness changes. It's, it's, it's very difficult to describe. It's, it's a sort of a psychedelic experience. In, in Quite ethereal. Yeah, I suppose that's what I need to put it. But mm-hmm. it's it's um, you, you're you're not really um, aware of what's going on around you. You know, outside this little bubble that you're in, mm-hmm. um, and you lose track of time, and um, you feel very very connected. If things are going well, that is, mm-hmm. you feel very very connected to the cosmos. You know, I know mm-hmm. that all sounds a bit airy fairy, but th- that that is anybody that has been in in that place will mm-hmm. will um, uh, understand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And trust in your intuition. Well, it, it it just you don't even question it. It just you know mm-hmm. you, you're you're um, you, you become a very instinctive creature, mm-hmm. and, and um, things just sort of flow through you. And you try to stay in that place for as long as you can, but mm-hmm. you, you do pop out of it. Yeah. And then you know you're when reality you're, hits. Well, reality yeah, is your, your yeah. insecurities yeah. can come to the fore, and and, and uh, your your worries about you know paying the bills or you know whatever mm-hmm. it is that's bothering you. you know, and, mm-hmm. um, you know your critical mind will, will, will be re-engaged but you know but when you when you're painting a picture or, or, or creating anything you know you, you, you are trying to get into that that place where it doesn't really feel like it's you that's, that's generating it's coming from some sort of other dimension you know that's you're like your subconscious you're, you're subconscious yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but nobody really knows what that is no there's there uh, you know it's not a, a dark material or anything it's uh, Thought, feeling. It's it's um. Like I said, I'm a very vivid dreamer. Mm-hmm. So, 
I spend a long time, a, a lot of time, reading about the subconscious, and, and uh, you know, I, I've, I've read a fair amount of uh, Carl Jung, mm -hmm. a psychologist, and uh, you know, it's, the subconscious is much broader and deeper than, than people appreciate. It's it's like the, the substructure of your entire being, and you know, when you, when you you know, open the mm -hmm. trap doors and have a look. You 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 really get an appreciation mm -hmm. for how how uh, what, what a rich, colourful and sometimes dark place it is. I think dreams are quite fascinating, um, and I know certainly from my, my counselling training and um, dreamscape, it's it's very interesting because um, there's some dreams that you don't remember, and there's other ones that are really really vivid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost like I wonder, you know, it's I sometimes keep a I keep a notebook by my bed and take a little note of what I think happened or what I think I I remember. Um but it's a, it's an interesting experience. Well I think I think um many people, if if they do remember their dreams are are, are quite intimidated by them. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, they, they prefer to to dismiss them as just a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of gibberish, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if it is gibberish, why do you, why do you bother to have it every night? Why does it happen to you? Yeah. And, and you know, some people have more coherent dreams than others. Um, usually, mine my, my dreams are organised into a very structured narrative, mm -hmm. so I'm able to sit down and and think about you know. What, what was my subconscious actually trying to communicate mm -hmm. to me there? I mean, your subconscious doesn't communicate literally mm -hmm. with words, you know, it, it, it does it in pictures. And, and over the course of my life, I've, I've developed the ability to, to analyse my dreams and understand mm -hmm. um, why I had that dream. Mm -hmm. And once you, once you infer accurately, you, you actually can solve some, some psychological problems that you may be having. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I know that the most vivid dreams that I've had, um, because you have your 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 initial sleep, and then you wake up, and then you fall asleep again, mm -hmm. and it's like your mind is emptied of all the rubbish or whatever that happened the day before, yeah. and it's like almost like a, a clear pathway. Yeah. And those are the dreams that I remember, and those are the dreams that are like, okay, I got the message. Mm -hmm. Um, quite a f fascinating process. It's amazing how your brain works. Yeah, I mean. If you if if you do have a problem and you're not dealing with it, you're just suppressing it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away. It just comes out when you're asleep, and then you have to deal with it the mm -hmm. next day. Mm -hmm. But you've also got this strange dream to mm -hmm. to contend with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and tell us about Reed Lockhart and the Game of Kings. Right. Well, that is a large landscape painting, mm -hmm. which. Um, is um, a celebration of Dunfermline's unique golfing history. Uh -huh. And I, I'm not personally a golfer, uh, but I'm very interested in history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this, or rather I had this friend who who said, oh, you should paint, you know, um, golf pictures, because you know, he, he's a golfer. And, mm -hmm. and he, he said, you know, you can make a lot of money from us. And that doesn't work like that. You can't, if you try to paint a picture for money, it, mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? I said, well, I would need to be interested in, this, in mm -hmm. the subject, right? So um, I discovered that uh, the men who introduced golf to the United States mm -hmm. came from Dunfermline. So this, this guy's name is John Reed, mm -hmm. and Robert Lockhart sent the first ever golf clubs to John Reed, who founded the first golf club in Yonkers, New York, in wow. 1888. And then I discovered that the hill that I live on uh -huh. um, in, in Dunfermline, uh -huh. in Fife, is... Uh, is known as the golf drum. Oh yeah, aye. And uh, that that uh, is where the ancient kings, King James the Sixth mm -hmm. and his son Charles the mm First, -hmm. used to play golf. Uh -huh. So I thought, um, um, there's this sort of uncelebrated history here. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought I could crash all these these mm -hmm. um, historical characters into one big painting, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I painted it deliberately in the style of, of Bruegel. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very derivative um, sort of painting, but um, and it's it's a lot of fun. Because um, we're I'm looking we're looking at the a replica over here, and it's um, it's like there's twenty stories within the one painting. 
Yeah. Yep. I, 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 I'm, I, I really like the idea that somebody could look at a painting and mm-hmm. feel like they've been to see a movie. Mm-hmm. So that painting is stuffed with, with um, uh, little vignettes and, and uh, historical details. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the Fairman Abbey is depicted there. Yeah. Um, now King Robert the Bruce is buried mm-hmm. there, so it's it's all about, it's all about the kings that are in Dunfermline. Is that Abbot House? It's not. No, that that's um, Pitt and Creef House. Ah. And that's relevant because the painting is all about Dunfermline's connection with America. Mm-hmm. And that, that house was owned by General John Forbes, mm-hmm. who was instrumental in the founding of the city of Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And just to the right of of that that building in the painting uh, is Andrew Carnegie you see on the edge there mm-hmm. and uh, he was a member of that golf club in Yonkers uh, so all these um, connections all these connections but also James VI sponsored the first colonies to the United States uh-huh. uh, and you see the little um, archery board mm-hmm. there that, that in, in 1457 I think I got that date right I uh, Golf was banned by Act of Parliament because the, all the, the infantrymen and archers weren't practicing. They were they were playing, playing golf. <laughs> so um, it, it was just it was just um, to put that in there to, to show you know that that you know golf's got its history. It goes way back. I'm just thinking if uh, that was modern day times, my dad would be very very upset. So when it comes to because you're smiling when you're talking about the different stories and the bits of research you've done yeah. do you find the research behind the project interesting? Well I spent about three months researching the yeah. painting because I, I knew that I couldn't afford to to get anything wrong mm-hmm. and the, the friend who I referred to earlier um, he actually teaches golf so he mm-hmm. was able to, to correct some of the mistakes that I had made mm-hmm. for example I've got Charles the first holding a golf club and I gave him a modern grip so mm-hmm. he came and said no no, no that's that's a modern grip. He, mm-hmm. he, he would have had what's called the club grip, so I had to change things like that. And mm-hmm. I've got a little caddy in the painting, and I had him carrying a golf bag. He said, "No, no, no, <laughs> golf bags are are, 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 are relatively are, new." Re- relatively new. So, yeah. um, and you know, the, the the posture and all these kind of things had to be changed. Um, mm-hmm. So there was a lot of time spent researching, and. Uh, uh, what I also did actually is um, I walked my dog every day through mm-hmm. Pitcreef Park uh-huh. and I made, I didn't do a lot of sketches for this painting but mm-hmm. I, I made a lot of, you know, sort of mental visual notes if you like yeah. um, I really looked at how, how water, because I'd never painted a landscape before mm-hmm. oddly enough and I, I had to understand what water looks like people think they know what things look like but mm-hmm. actually uh, you really don't, you know, until you really study, and then you see that that um, you know th- things are not uh, as they seem. Mm-hmm. So I, I really paid close attention to nature, and, and the hardest thing to paint is is uh, trees. Trees are extremely difficult because they're, they're not what you think they look like. Mm-hmm. They're actually very different. Yeah, because my version of a tree is a a stick with four bits coming out of it. You right. know, but if you're um, the ones that you've got there, they're, it's like they're alive. Well, the thing is, um, as you look up a tree, it becomes silhouetted against the sky. So mm-hmm. the top of a tree is very, very black. Mm-hmm. But as you, your eye moves down, mm-hmm. the, the trunk will appear quite light. Mm-hmm. So I had to discover that mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and then paint it accurately. I mean, it's... Mm-hmm. I think you know, it only takes a few seconds to look at an artwork, mm-hmm. but if the artist hasn't hasn't spent enough time with, with the convincing process, then mm-hmm. people identify it very quickly, mm-hmm. and, and they can they can tell that that, that this doesn't look right, mm-hmm. and that's particularly true when you're you're painting a human form. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the human brain is is very very astute and can and can pick up sort of visual indiscretions. Um, so you, you know you really have to to um, focus when you, when you're creating something. Mm-hmm. If you, if you're gonna if you're gonna persuade the, the viewer mm-hmm. that, that that this is a a, a, a real thing. Mm-hmm. So if I said it was quite important to you prior to starting this painting that you had all the mysteries, if you like, solved in your head about the stories behind the characters and 
Well, that, that's that's the inspiration.